Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and in today's video, I wanna show you how I store my thrift store shirts before I break them down into fabric for quilting. If you have bought into the idea, as I have, of using thrift store men's shirts for fabric for quilting, at some point you will have this right here, which is a pile of washed and dried and detagged shirts that are ready to be broken down um, and cut up into fabric so that you can use it for your quilting. The problem with that is if you are a thrift store shopper at all, you know that the nature of thrift store shopping is feast or famine. So you may go six times in a row and not find anything that you want, or maybe just like one shirt that is a reasonable price or a fabric that you like. Uh, but if you do it long enough, you will go and on one wonderful random day, you'll hit the mother load and uh, you'll end up with, you know, as many shirts as you can afford. Well, maybe that's just me. P.S. Did you know mother load? It's L-O-D-E, not load. Like I always thought it was like a load of shirts, but it's like load, L-O-D-E of, was that like gold or minerals? Anyway, um, just side note, I love words. So um, you'll have this pile of shirts. And originally when I started, I would put them next to me in our living room. And as I was watching TV, I would break my shirts down. And so I would have two or three at a time. Well, two or three became, eight or nine became, 20 became <laughs> 50. I don't know. I really, I actually, I think I counted and I blocked it because of the shame. But um, moral of the story, you're going to end up with a lot of shirts because the process of breaking them down and quilting, if you're like me, you're balancing the time spent quilting plus getting your shirts into a place where you can use them. And then there's, of course, the storage of your fabric once you get it broken down, which I've already covered. So it's kind of this pain point of, ugh, I have all these shirts. And this is not tenable in a sewing space. If you're like most sewists that I know, we like an orderly space if we can. And pulling out fabric makes its own mess. So having a pile of shirts does not work. So what I had done was this times five was in a tote and I just had it shoved over off camera in the corner of my sewing room. And shortly before Thanksgiving, so at the end of November, I had a whole lot of things to do in my life apart from quilting. So work, I have pharmacy CE, that I was supposed to be doing and should have done months before, um, bills to pay, videos to plan, things to sew, needed to go to the grocery store. And um, my husband and I were talking about all the adulting that we needed to do that day. And we had a whole plan and I stood up and walked into my sewing area and looked at this pile of shirts in a tote and was like, oh no, this will not do. And so that's literally everything I had planned for the day went completely out the window. I abandoned all real responsibility and completely reorganized my shirt. So it's like a shirt stash. You know, we have a fabric stash. Well, you'll probably end up with a shirt stash. Um, and you know, like most things, your system or lack of a system works until the point that it doesn't. And for whatever reason that day it didn't work anymore. So I got a burr up my butt and went hog wild crazy, pulled every shirt out of the, <laughs> of the tote, had so many more than I thought, had fabrics, shirt fabrics that I had completely forgotten that I could have used in previous projects, but that had gotten buried to the bottom, which kind of is the whole, this system doesn't work because I bought these gorgeous shirts and forgot I even had them. So I want to show you what I ended up with and it has worked beautifully for me. Um, these are piled up because 
I actually recently got them and that will turn up in a thrift haul <laughs> probably soon. But anyway, I want to get out my um, storage for my thrift store shirts and show you how to do it. So here we are. Here is my process. Um, clearly, I'm a fan of totes. I'm totes a fan of totes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they're clear. <laughs> Clearly, I'm a fan of totes. So what I did that morning where I was a woman possessed standing in my pajamas with my hair askew uh, and all of my shirts all over the floor of my sewing area, um, I just thought it through and was like, I need to be able to see what I have. And that's true for all fabric stashes. As you know, it does no good to have a whole bunch of gorgeous fabric if you can't see it and if you can't access it um, because you forget what you have, as I mentioned. And so what I did, I looked at all the shirts that I had and decided, as usual, to <laughs> put my colored fabrics together and my neutrals together. <clears throat> And you'll notice that my neutrals are awfully blue to be, <laughs> to be neutrals. Um, so what I did, I looked at what I had and I actually had, as you would imagine, a lot of light blue men shirts. And it's because that's a lot of what's out there and they really do make a great background. So I made the decision that that, that would be my neutral. Um, I had the most of them. I knew that if I tried to work them into the colored section, it would be too much. So I did whites, lo basically low volume, and then some gray and then my blue. So that's what's on this side. Um, and then I put my brightly colored shirts um, together, essentially in rainbow order, as close as I could get it. And... You don't have to do that, <laughs> obviously. This shows a little bit of the way my mind works. For me, it helps me to see um, not just what I have, but also if I'm looking for fabric to match a project, um, then I'm already in the area. So like, for example, uh, when I was getting ready to start that Christmas quilt um, that didn't make it, <laughs> for Christmas. This would have been like here are two reds together and I could hold up my other fabric against it and instead of like if this was here and this was here comparing them against each other. I generally like to group my fabrics in color order um, for that reason and also it's just kind of aesthetically pleasing. Immediately what happened when I did this and so I encourage you to do if not this something like this it freed up so much mental space. I was, I was holding a lot of space um, for the clutter and the what shirts do I have and what if I need something. And when I did this, it was like I went, oh, it just like opened up a space in my head. What it also did, and I don't know if any of you have seen the Marie Kondo um, way of storing clothes, uh, folding and storing clothes. My first instinct was to stack them. So they, they are stacked, but they're stacked on their side. Um, my first instinct was to, to do them like this and have them down in. But as I already alluded to, if I did that, then there's shirts on the bottom. Um, so what I did is, and let me just, let's see what's loose, probably this one. So I folded my shirts, kind of semi Marie Kondo style. So I took my shirt out, did it face down, folded the shoulder in and the shoulder in, and then I folded it essentially in thirds. And the reason why I did thirds was because that was the height of my tote. So if you have a shallower tote, you could do, you know, you could actually make it like this and still have the same concept, or if they're taller, so, so on and so forth. So I did mine in thirds um, and, you know, kind of stacked them up so that I had them somewhat neatly. 
Uh, and it's important to remember that at this point, these are going to be broken down. So they don't have to be pressed. They don't have to be anything other than somewhat orderly. <laughs> uh, and then I just stack them up on my ironing board and then eventually turn them and put them down in. And if you have seen the Marie Kondo stuff, one of the things that she says is don't keep anything or only keep the things that spark joy. And we fabric lovers and thrift store lovers, we understand this maybe better than a lot of people because you see a particular fabric and go, oh, and it literally sparks joy. And sometimes going to the thrift store and finding that diamond in, a, in the rough, the $1.99 shirt on half off and you are there on senior day and you walk out of there for like a 50 cent shirt that you love the fabric. So let's display it. Let's put it together in a way that when you look at it, it continues to spark joy before you get it to your fabric stash. And so I don't know if anybody else that's watching this, just talking about this <laughs> is giving me joy, especially this brightly colored one. And it is because it's arranged with that fold up instead of stacked. If I was starting a new project, which I'm always starting a new project, then I can pull out, when I go to do the fabric pull, it doesn't have to be already into those neat little folded fabric. I can still do a fabric pull from my shirt stash. And then when I get ready to start the actual project, I just break down the shirt at that point. Some of you have mentioned that you, um, when you get your shirts out of the washer and dryer, you hang them and that is so great. And if that works for you, please hear me say that is so wonderful. But I have had a couple of people say, once they have them hung up and in a closet, either their own closet or an extra closet, it's hard to think of it as fabric. It feels like shirts. And if you're a person that's kind of already prone to, I don't want to cut into this because it's so nice, or this is someone's really good shirt, or... I mean, some of us are reluctant to cut into fabric that we bought at the quilt store and they've already cut it, but we're scared to cut it because we value it and because it does spark joy. If it's hanging in your closet, that's going to be potentially another obstacle like, oh, I don't want to mess up this shirt. But when, at least for me, when it's like this, it does kind of look just like fabric. I mean, obviously you can tell it's a shirt because of the buttons, but it's like looking at a row of, of, of bolts of fabric. Um, so for me, it's, it's just another half step toward getting it to, this is not a shirt, this is fabric. Um, so that's that. I don't think there's really, I'm sure actually, there's more I can say about it, but I'll stop there because I want to show you something, and I don't often say this, that you should not do. Learn from me. Let me show you a what not to do. So this is the bag of shame. <laughs> it's not, it's really fun. While I was taking my shirts out uh, of the big pile and folding them and arranging them and blowing an entire morning doing so, I found quite a few shirts that I had pulled out and like washed and dried and ready to go and wanted to use them in a project and did not have any self-discipline to take the time to break it down properly. And by that, what I mean is I cut the back out of it and just went to town. And so, <laughs> I mean, just like, like straight out, just cut it out, like took that big piece of fabric that is, you know, more than a fat quarter and like, let's go. And so guess what that leaves? That leaves this monstrosity, <laughs> which is the collar and front yoke of both sides. This one happens to be a short sleeve and no back. Like, 
what? Why would I do that to myself? I do things like this to myself. It's a complete self-sabotage thing. It's like when you realize you need gas when you're pulling into your driveway or almost pulling into your driveway and you think, oh, I'll just do it in the morning on the way into work. And then the morning comes and you've forgotten and you haven't left the extra time. And then now you're scrambling. Does no one else? Do? Okay. I think surely somebody else does that. But same kind of idea because now I have zero interest in breaking this down and it does not fold neatly as you can imagine. I mean, it would work better as a scarf. <laughs> but, <laughs> so it's just, it's infuriating is what it is. Um, so don't do this. Like, don't be like me, be, be not like me. So what I did is I actually, I created the bag of shame and what I've been doing actually is here's another one. Oh, my stars. This was actually a kid's shirt. So cute. When I get to the end of my day, especially if I've worked all day and I get home and I'm kind of like wanting to sit in a heap, I just take one of these and I'm just slowly chipping away at it. It's kind of that part-time quilter thing. It doesn't take as long because it's not a full shirt. And then I have the satisfaction of, okay, that's one more thing. So my goal is to empty the bag and never have this bag again. It was actually mounted up. So I have, I have made quite a dent in it. But if you have impulse control <laughs> problems and you're prone to do that, stop and think about it and go, let's just take the extra 15 minutes and break the whole shirt down um, and then be done with it and you won't have this. That's the moral of that story. I hope this has been an encouragement for you, um, both as a, it's okay if you have a ton of shirts that you have not broken down. And also, let's make good choices and find a place to put them so that they still work for you and they do what they're meant to do, which is to spark joy, give you some gorgeous fabric and have it in a way that works for your quilting process. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching.